I want an officer for a secret and dangerous mission. I want a West Point football player, George C. Marshall. For me, it means that he wants somebody who's tough, someone who's dedicated, someone who's going to get the mission done. And West Point, West Point football players epitomize that character. An Army football player is somebody who understands how to be a teammate, understands what selfless service is, and is willing to pay any price to achieve that mission. That quote symbolizes the performance of Army football players in service to their nation, and it represents the quality of an individual who has played Army football for well over 100 years. Will Huff is my brother. We've sweated on the fields of friendly strife for many years and served together on a, on a battlefield. The night I was wounded, he flew with me all the way from Baghdad to Germany, just talking to me, willing me to live. And um, that's brotherhood. Strength and honor of the brotherhood. Um, leads out in the hallway uh, as you exit to the practice field. Those words uh, to the core of who we are. The brotherhood represents who we are today, how we plan to act tomorrow, and uh, who we represent in our daily lives that pretty much laid our foundation at Navy football. It goes down to the core who we represent. The brotherhood is what we use um, as our core of, of why we do everything that we do. Willing to lay our lives on the line for our fellow brother, for our fellow man. Tradition never graduates, hangs in the team room. Tradition never graduates. What we do here, how we win, how we celebrate, how we play the game, never ever changes. Return with honor, hangs in the locker room, right over the door, entry and exit. Return with honor just simply means that every time you walk out of that door, whether it be to play a game of football, whether it to go off and serve the nation, it means that you have to do it the right way. It's the last sign you see that's reminding you that your actions will dictate and uh, influence others of what your organization is going to look like. So better return to those doors, be a good representation of the Brotherhood. From the moment you step foot on the Annapolis campus, the term Beat Army is ingrained in your head. From the day you enter West Point, you hear Beat Navy. I was never more nervous than stepping out, starting my first Army-Navy game in 1988 at a greater level of, of, of angst and nervous. Now, it is different than being in combat, but the magnitude can be overwhelming for those first timers. Let's go! Here we go, here we go. One, two, three! Get on! The magnitude of the game, as I mentioned, can, can be overwhelming. You know, I would just share that I won my first three Army-Navy football games and I lost my last Army-Navy football game. 15 seconds to go, the ball is at the 15, and it's 17-16 Army. The kick is good! The Army-Navy game is the game that everyone will, will remember. It is the wins and losses that you carry with you for the rest of your life. It's December 7th, 1996. Absolutely horrible. 40 seconds to play from the 10, but the pass is picked off and that's the ball game. Army wins with the biggest comeback in the 97 year history of this series. We lost to Army all four of my years here uh, by I think a combined total of 10 points, which is painful painful losses. Inevitably, you'll, as a Naval Academy graduate, West Point graduate, you'll, you'll be asked, what's your win-loss record? And that is your win-loss record for Army-Navy games. It's how we maybe mark our time or you know, a badge of honor that you were able to compete against survivors and be victorious. 
the game itself is just a jump off, uh, jumping off point uh, for a greater uh, service to country. And when you're out in the, in, in the thick of things, um, we depend heavily upon each other uh, to, to get the job done out, out in the fleet. And I can speak firsthand about the modern conflict. There is also a great jointness, and I've been fortunate enough to have, have been deployed alongside Navy football players, and I am biased to the attributes that a football player and, a, and an athlete brings to the modern conflict. We've been fighting this war on terrorism for the past 15 years, and the military is a small community, and there is no doubt that we're going to cross paths. There's no doubt that we are going to be uh, side by side on uh, somewhere on these battlefields. That day we play, we are, we are fierce competitors. There is a, a huge sense that it, after that game, you're on the same team and you are brothers. And essentially, you're, you're almost the same person, just having to be rivals on that, those four years, on those four days. People see those signs, I hope they, they know and they're proud of the fact that they have future warriors um, abiding by that code every day. They feel good that those are the future guardians of this country's values, beliefs, and uh, governances. I want them to realize that, that in life you're going to get knocked down, but you have a commitment, you have a responsibility, you have an obligation to get up and fight again and never quit. I want people to know that the young men and young women uh, who decide to come to the Service Academy come back knowing that the, the, the world is much bigger than the individual. I would like them to reflect on both the previous, those who have sacrificed, paid the ultimate sacrifice, the contemporary football players who those that we're gonna watch on December 12th out there in the fields of friendly strife, that those seeds are certainly being sown that upon other days and other fields will, will bear the fruits of victory. And although that quote comes from General Douglas MacArthur, that is truly appropriate for every individual playing in the Army-Navy game.